um, I think can anybody hear hear us hear me is is the quality okay maybe you can just yeah, it's, it's fine for me yeah we're good yeah uh, okay awesome <laughs> okay so the just a second let me okay so the the agenda for today is we'll we'll uh walk you through a few points one of the points is what have happened in the the uh last testnet and the current state of the testnet the next one is the, the an explanation of what are you guys seeing on the current uh, uh node dashboard and uh uh, what what are the new features that are coming in the new dashboard, the, the, the validated dashboard? Then uh, we'll we'll touch a bit of what we will cover on the the previous versions of our testnet and the the next sprints and so forth. Then uh, also another point uh, point is we're gonna touch a bit uh, on the economics uh, on the rewards and the fee pa fees part. Uh, also a, a bit on the scripting and launching uh, part and then we're gonna have the q a part uh, for for everyone um, yep uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll let uh, it's really really great having you guys in here and uh, great that we have uh, managed to organize ourselves uh, and synchronize in, in some sort of a centralized way but uh, I think, and I hope that uh, we'll we'll be able to do this uh, for the on the upcoming weeks uh, more often and uh, sync sync with everyone. Oh, awesome! Hi, Felix. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Felix. Oh, Hi. Okay. So uh, I think um, I'll let Julian uh touch or um uh, one of my team uh, members to touch a bit on what have happened in the, the last version of uh testnet yeah of course okay. if, you, if you guys uh, have uh, questions you can at any point uh yeah uh, shoot the question either in the chat or just uh, unmute yourself and ask directly perfect <laughs> Okay. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Julian, and uh, I'm here about. Uh, I'm here uh, talking with you about uh, uh, what is happening uh, on the current version of the testnet. Um, as you might notice, uh, when we started the testnet uh, two weeks back, um, a lot of you might try the, to send transactions in the system to stress it and uh, a lot of transactions got in the pool and never uh, uh, actually executed and uh, what uh, uh, had happened is that uh, we have uh, activated some checks on the transactions and those transactions couldn't have been uh, executed in the sender shard they was they were stuck in the destination shard and we uh, uh, observed that uh, our nodes that were uh, stressing the testnet were uh, uh, a bit offline and the transaction couldn't have been sent uh, to the system. So we modified a little bit those, uh, uh, those nodes uh, to uh, simply, so they simply do, uh, uh, didn't care about uh, the transaction that uh, were flooding the network. So uh, yeah, uh, it was pretty uh, intense, this uh, testnet. A lot of transactions are in the pool right now, on, mostly on shard four. Uh, and this is because uh, we didn't anticipate it that uh, activating that check will actually render uh, the generation of some transactions to be unexecutable. So, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. The testnet also is running right now and uh, still producing blocks, uh, still producing, still validating uh, uh, correct transactions, but those transactions that 
cannot be executed are stuck in the pool, hopefully they will be elim eliminated uh, 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 periodically. So yeah. one, one other point to add here is that the functionality or the API to generate those uh, uh, transactions, lots of transactions and to stress the network was originally meant to be used internally uh, by us. So uh, when uh, we started the, the previous version of the testnet, uh, actually, the nonce check, I think, was it already in, Julian? I think it was in, right? No, but, it was, uh, it, it, on the previous testnet, no, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't activated, the, the transaction uh, nonce mm -hmm. check. It's only yeah. activated on this version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we uh, previously we had a different uh, way to uh, to uh, let's say um, not flood the not fill the pool with uh, useless transactions because what you get now are transactions that cannot be uh, processed. But uh, this will get cleaned up in time when uh, new new transactions come. And actually, uh, after we enabled the nonce check the generator of transactions uh, is no longer working properly. So currently we're, uh, there's also someone in the team working to have a new generator that you could also use. Um, quick question, have anyone from here uh, used the generator before to try to spam the network? Any any of you? Uh, the, actually, it's the API. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, nope. Okay. <laughs> that uh, nobody was flooding our network. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we, we stopped the behind the scene. Yeah, we stopped the generation from our nodes, and uh, we could still see that transactions were being generated. So there was definitely someone uh, yeah, flooding the network. <laughs> yeah, me, I, I, see, I saw. <laughs> But anyway, Other it's good. Time. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's move uh, to the next. I think we can start with explanation from Termi why what you can see on the console. So uh, right now, uh, I will let my colleague uh, uh, Radu to explain some of the new features on the, uh, uh, dash, uh, the application dashboard. So I will start the presentation right now. So with the latest update that we had on the 15th of uh, August, uh, we also integrated the term UI, where you could um, easily um, have an overview of what's happening with your node. Uh, we are still developing it. So the uh, previous version had only the instance info and the chain info and the CPU load, memory load and the network activity. Um, and um, those um, the loads, the CPU memory and network activity were on the whole computer on all the processes that happen on your machine. Right now we fix that and the CPU load, memory load and the network activity are just for the current uh, process that is running the node, the actual node. So uh, let me talk about all the five parts that we have here. Instance info, the first part, chain info, the second part, the block info, the third part, the CPU memory and network activity and the log info on the bottom. So the instance info, um, uh, encompasses some information about the um, uh, sorry guys maybe can you share, you maybe can you share on the screen a picture of the term UI while you explain it and it's maybe a good idea to see yeah this. it's already being presented oh or you mean on the chat or we are I think we're presenting it yeah I, uh, I can I can see the presentation I can see, uh, I can see the screen sharing okay Okay, sorry. My bad. I can okay, also see it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, the instance info has some um, instance information here. For example, the app version that we, we didn't compile it here using the stack. Yeah? Just, just a second, sorry. Uh, so, there are, there are uh, a few other people telling me that uh, they cannot see the, the shared screen. It's black. Maybe maybe you can try share it, share, sharing it again. Okay. 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 I will stop sharing and then would, would be would be great. Yeah. Let's let's try that. 
Am încercat asta în Windows și să zic că asta. So, uh, right now I'm presenting only uh, the term UI window. Uh, uh, can it be seen? Yes, I, I can see it. I can see it as well. Me too. Uh, who doesn't see it? Please raise a hand. <laughs> Otherwise, we will make a print screen and uh, uh, it, it's okay. It's okay. Seems seems to work. Okay. Okay. Great. So, like I said, we have five uh, different uh, areas here. The first area is the instance info on the top left. Uh, we have some instance information, like the application version um, that is uh, coming from the GitHub. If you are compiling the latest version, you should see there uh, 1.015. The then uh, uh, slash and the Go version uh, that you have installed on your computer and the operating system. Uh, here we have the Linux AMD 64 and it's a 64 bit operating system. Then we have the public key for transaction signing. This is the public key for your wallet where you can see your balance. And um, using uh, this key, uh, other people could send you some. Uh, uh, some tokens, some elrons. The public key for the block sign uh, is used for uh, signing the blocks during uh, the consensus. So if you are uh, of an instance type validator, not just observer like we are here, then you are going to participate in the consensus and propose and sign different blocks. And this uh, public key is going to be used for your signature. The shared ID is the shard, uh, the, the shard number where you are assigned right now. We are currently in shard zero, but there are five shards running plus the meta chain. If you are uh, assigned to the meta chain, then the shard ID is going to be meta chain there. The consensus group participation count is the number of times you were selected to be in the consensus group. Uh, the shards have uh, something like 28 uh, nodes in each shard but the consensus group is uh, only of 21. So uh, two thirds of the times you are going to be uh, selected in the consensus group, and this is going to increase the consensus group participation count counter. The elected consensus leader count is the number of times in which you were the uh, block proposer. The first um, validator in the consensus group also proposes the block and sends it to the consensus group so that the other uh, validators in the consensus group can validate and uh, sign, send their signatures. And the consensus proposed and accept, uh, accepted blocks is another counter where we count how many times the block that you have proposed and the validators have accepted it uh, was accepted also by the network. The chain info um, um, encompasses information about the blockchain what round, uh, what nonce you are at, and the status. The first thing is the status. We are currently syncing. Um, so uh, we are not uh, processing the latest, latest block in the network because we started um, just right now, uh, or not right now, uh, some, times ago today, some time ago today, to uh, bootstrap, to sync with, uh, with the network. So the number of transactions in our pool is 249,984. Right now, that means that in the network, the transactions that are being generated also reached us and they are uh, saved in, in some pools. The current synchronized block nonce is the actual number of the block that we are processing right now, 13,727, out of 206,000 of blocks that have been uh, produced in the shard zero. The current consensus round is the round uh, um, that we are currently syncing with the block uh, that is there. Out of the total rounds that we have, we can see that there were 255,000 rounds, but only 206,000 um, blocks were proposed, were produced. That means that only four out of five rounds actually produced, uh, produced the block. We see that, that the consensus round time is four seconds. That means that every four seconds, a new block should be produced, but it's not necessarily to be produced. If the proposer doesn't gather all the signatures or the 
uh, block that the proposer produces is not valid, then a block is not going to be produced. Multiplying the current consensus round of 255,000 with four seconds, you could see how long the network um, has been running. The live validator nodes are 152. This is the number of validator nodes that are actually participating in the consensus in all of the six shards, the five shards plus the meta chain. The network connected nodes are 173. That means that we have 21 observer nodes above the 152 validators that are actively participating in the consensus. And this node is connected to 170 peers. That means it, our uh, current observer has connections to 170 of the other uh, nodes in the network. The block info uh, has the information about the current block that we are processing right now. We are uh, processing the current block nonce 14,280. The number of transactions in block is zero. The number of mini blocks uh, is zero. The cross-check block height, the, uh, we are on shard zero, but we are also synchronizing with the meta chain to see on what uh, block the meta chain is. And that's the cross-check block height. Uh, we have seen from the meta chain the block 4, 14,232. The consensus round state is not in the consensus group because we are an observer right now. And the consensus round state, we cannot uh, uh, know. Thinking. Yes, we are just thinking. The CPU load uh, is about 32%, 9% right now. Uh, just this instance of the application is using 41%. Uh, we are using 684 megabytes out of the 15 uh, gigabytes that we have. And the network activity, you can see four or five megabytes per second upload and download with some peak rates of 14 uh, upload, 4 megabytes upload, 10 megabytes do uh, download. That's why we are saying that we would need a uh, dual core CPU, uh, memory of 4 gigabytes, and uh, 100 megabits per second uh, network upload and download. On the bottom, we have the log info. This is all the information that we are logging from our uh, application. You could also see the header that we have there, with uh, what type of block it is, what chart it is, the epoch, the timestamp, the root hash um, there, and uh, other uh, information that could be also found in the other four uh, uh, tables that we, that we have here. Like I said, uh, we are currently uh, still working on this. We are refining the uh, term UI, but we think that the uh, update that we made two weeks ago uh, was really, really uh, good for the, for the validators to, to see an overview of what happens on their node and not just to look in the log on the bottom and try to see what round it is right now, what's the current block, what is the current status that we have right now, uh, what is the CPU load and the memory load? Uh, does anyone have any question on the term UI or should we move on for our next subtopic? Uh, I've stopped the sharing. Yeah, maybe I just wanted to add one thing is that uh, here the node was uh, synchronizing so whenever you are synchronizing and not already synchronized then all the resource consumption is higher than if you are already synchronized because right now you're uh, uh, the node you have seen in uh, in the uh, with the term UI uh, it was trying to uh, validate uh, multiple nodes in uh, in uh, very limited time otherwise uh, you would have just one block uh, uh, in one round which is four seconds okay okay I think we can move on the next topic is what <coughs> what and when we will have our new testnet version uh, first uh, uh, we are planning it to have uh, to start it end of next week so we will have the registration opens some uh, sometimes middle of next week uh, for this new version we want to have an updated heartbeat which uh, uh, 
sends information from your node to all other nodes about uh, a general information if you are up, down, uh, or what you are doing and where you are doing it. This data is then presented on our explorer to everybody can see who is up, who is running. And, uh, furthermore, we have a new version for TermUI. Some of these data were, were uh, already shown to you by uh, Radu. Uh, there might be coming some new information as well on the term UI. Uh, and uh, all this new information will be added to the Explorer as well to see, uh, not all, but some of that, that, to see everything in a centralized way and easy to access uh, from wherever you wherever you are, what is the status of your node. Uh, furthermore, as we prepared uh, economics uh, on uh, through the last two sprints, we have uh, reached, uh, I think, like 10% more work needed, but uh, we are uh, strongly determined to have the new testnet with rewards and fees uh, furthermore, we in this new testnet, uh, we are hoping to have new statistics for every validator, every node, and all these statistics to be shown in the Explorer. So you will see data like how many times uh, some of your peers process the block, sign the block, what is his uptime, what is, uh, how many times did he miss a block, uh, and uh, stuff like that, uh, stuff like that, and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, new metrics can we get out of that and uh, present to everybody. Uh, furthermore, we are in order to to do not have those pools full of transactions. We are really working on the smart interceptors. Uh, which will let only good transactions to enter those pools and the processing will be much faster as you have to as access a smaller memory. Uh, next, I think there will be more talks about rewards and fees. If you have any more, any questions, just please interrupt us. Uh. Yeah, so about uh, rewards and fees, as uh, Robert mentioned earlier, we're trying to have this uh, implemented for the next version of the, the testnet. Um, a little bit about uh, what these are. The fees uh, means that uh, each block proposer will uh, receive uh, the fees from the transactions he adds into, into a block. Uh, half, actually, we've uh, um, released a, a paper for the uh, economic part uh, some time ago, and where we explained uh, how uh, how we plan to have uh, uh, this managed. And uh, just uh, a, a quick uh, recap on that: the block proposer will receive half of the uh, of the fees from all the transactions added to his block. Uh, the other half uh, will be split. Of course, there will be an option. If you uh, opt in to have 10% of the transaction fee added to, the, to a community fund, which will be used for uh, uh, people to develop things on Aaron. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will also be burned with the, the other 40% uh, percent of the entire uh, fees. So it's like this, half of uh, the fees go to the uh, block proposer, uh, the other half uh, will be 40%, uh, uh, like, no, 90% of the other half, <laughs> uh, or 80% 80, 80 actually from the other half will be uh, burned and 20% will go if you opted in to a, a community fund. Uh, for the rewards, um, also, it was uh, presented in the um, economics paper and uh, how we will do it is that every, uh, every validator who was elected in a consensus uh, group 
will receive a fixed reward um, if a block was produced and uh, committed in the network on their round. So uh, either if his uh, signature was considered for the validation of the block or not, if he was in the consensus group and the block was produced, uh, he will get a, a fixed reward. Now, this uh, we are doing this because, um, as you know, you could uh, actually have some censorship by the block proposer who can decide that uh, he has enough signatures and he does not want to include certain nodes. So with this, uh, we can uh, have everyone who participated in the consensus group uh, receive uh, the rewards. If a block is not produced on the round, then none of the consensus groups will, uh, none of the consensus group uh, validators will receive any reward on that round. Um, how how you guys could check the uh, the rewards? Uh, this will be implemented through some system generated transactions, uh, and this will be included in the in the block where a, a consensus uh, is uh, uh, is valid. So in the same block that the consensus is validating, uh, there will be also the the reward transactions up either for for the fees that you get from the uh, transactions that will go to the leader or block proposer uh, or the fixed rewards for every consensus group uh, member uh, you could check this uh, either on explorer uh, or uh, there will be as uh, robert mentioned earlier there will be some statistics where you can see uh, how many times you have been a, a block uh, proposer or a, 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 a validator, and you can check uh, your the, the the balance that did the staking. So uh, you've seen in the term UI there were two addresses. Uh, one of those addresses in the term UI was actually I think the the address that did the staking for the node. Uh, and the other one was the the public uh, the uh, public key for uh, for signing blocks. Uh, so the first uh, address is also the one the one which has a balance, and you will be able to check also the balance uh, if if there is uh, uh, if you got your uh, reward. Um, so uh, we are. Uh, currently, we are testing uh, the rewards and fees uh, on uh, shard nodes. For the meta chain nodes, uh, both for rewards and fees, um, we still need to do some work. We are expecting to also finish this uh, before the release of the test net of the next uh, test net version. But if we don't manage for certain reasons like bugs, we cannot uh, uh, debug in time. Uh, then uh, we will cover the the meta chain uh, nodes uh, ourselves, and then you guys can uh, enter as uh, shard nodes and uh, have uh, yeah have the rewards and fees uh, uh, for the nodes. Why is it more complicated for the meta chain nodes uh, right now? Is because meta chain nodes do not deal with transactions. They just notarize uh, headers, uh, block headers. So they cannot uh, process uh, currently the transactions. Uh, we have a, a, a solution to add also the rewards for this. It's just a matter of uh, execution and if we encounter some uh, problems. So yeah, uh, what I expect is that we can have also on MetaChain the rewards and fees by the next uh, uh, testnet version. I'll take the entire shard number three for myself. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, so uh, that's it for rewards and fees. If, maybe if you guys have uh, other questions or something was not clear, please uh, go ahead. I think maybe what, what is also interesting is uh, to touch a bit on, on the, the required stake. Maybe when is it going to be uh, available? Yeah, so right. About the staking and uh, about, let's call it unbounding <coughs> bonding uh, in the run. So not uh, only on the Genesis time as we are doing it now. We already planned it for the current spring. 
and we hope to fin finish it at the end of the sprint. This means like three weeks time. So it will not enter the next week's version of the testnet, but on the uh, further uh, in four weeks time, we will have it that as well. In that time, you will be able to send a transaction of 500,000 uh, air rounds to, to, to a smart contract and you become a validator. Yeah, so but, uh, there will no longer be any need for the registration Excel, I think it was an Excel, right? Yeah, yeah, a, a, Google, a Google spreadsheet. So, but, okay, Google but spreadsheet. You, you will so, so just another question here. Um, does that mean that we will be able to start the every testnet with Gentix uh, files instead of uh, to, to generate the Genesis file using the Gentix uh, uh, yes, have, procedure? Once we, yes, once we have the uh, smart contract or the protocol smart contract functionality uh, in place, we can start with fewer nodes and then uh, other validators who join the network uh, real time. And uh, they will be uh, assigned to shards and they will be able to participate in the consensus. Also after the, the testnet has started, not um, just if they have um, completed the registration process and they were added to the Genesis file at the beginning of the testnet. Yes, but I was asking about the registration process. The initial Will we part, switch, the initial. Yeah, switch from Excel file to uh, generating a Genetics, uh, Genesis transaction, right? And then you guys combine them into one file and then uh, that's the Genesis. Actually, it's a bit uh, different. So everyone will start from the same Genesis file, maybe uh, validators that wanted to start from the very beginning and uh, we'll use the same uh, process as we had now. We'll just register their uh, keys uh, to be to be uh, already assigned in the Genesis block. Uh, but afterwards, um, or in the in the uh, nodes configuration, uh, but afterwards it will still be possible to join as a validator as long as you get the 500k uh, uh, to um, testnet error tokens. And you can just send a transaction in the system, if, and this transaction is a join as a validator transaction. Let's call it that. And then you will automatically uh, be registered as a validator, and you need to have your uh, machine running with those keys that you register through that transaction. Of course, we will prepare this. Uh, it will be uh, a different API inside the wallet uh, where where you you can uh, uh, that you can use. Uh, so it's simpler. Uh, you don't have to uh, uh, add different parameters, cryptic parameters. So it will be easy to to join uh, as a validator. Yeah. So uh, the, the the question was only in regards to the initial start of the network. Mm -hmm. When you start, when we are, we are generating the, the Genesis files, there is a, a defined process, uh, for example, mm -hmm. where people can submit on GitHub their uh, their keys mm. and uh, we we only merge the keys into one single file and uh, yeah that, that's I think we can we can uh, touch on that as well but the the, the main feature I think or the most more, more important than that is it will be to have the smart contract registration process because for example we will be able to support let's say for the network start uh, or, or a couple of nodes. And once uh, the nodes, those nodes are online, and we have even if we have a, a, fa a, a defined Genesis file with with uh, a few nodes, uh, people, as Adrian mentioned, people will be able to just send uh, or acquire or request those uh, test tokens and send them to the to to a smart contract, and then you're gonna be elected. Or they can win through crypto bubbles and send it for yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what Mihai was asking. If we, if if uh, is he able to use the, the test uh, or it's from the crypto bubbles? Unfortunately, not. Uh, crypto bubbles currently uh, runs on a different testnet, on a different branch with uh, with a, a, a VM 
execution with another version of the around VM. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that on the next testnet, it will be interesting to 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 have maybe also the VM or the crypto bubbles mm -hmm. launched uh, on the same uh, mm -hmm. at least one room as a test to mm -hmm. have it launched uh, on the same uh, on the same testnet uh, on the same public testnet and see how yeah. it goes. The, the reason we had uh, we had it on a different test net was that it's easier to debug if uh, there are problems uh, if you only have uh, to take into consideration the the smart contract and not other other stuff as well yep okay uh, yep I think we can move on for the script <coughs> uh, yes um... All the scripts I will uh, I will join uh, I will <coughs> sorry um, I will start uh, uh, talking about them. Uh, we have managed to make some scripts uh, to for an easier launch of the node and an easier update uh, process of the node. So uh, I will start the presentation right now. Uh, can it be seen? Uh, we can. Can see you it. see our screen? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, on uh, our GitHub page, uh, we have a repo called uh, Aaron Go Script, uh, in which we made uh, uh, some scripts for uh, Ubuntu uh, AMD sixty four. And in this uh, in this folder, um, there are a couple of scripts. The most important are uh, the install uh, and update script. Uh, we have uh, written all the uh, painstaking uh, installation of uh, uh, Golang and other uh, uh, um, stuff that we require to dependencies. Yes, uh, and also. Uh, we have uh, included here the uh, compilation process with all the um, uh, flags required by the, the Go build tool. And uh, also we have uh, managed to uh, make some improvements of the previous uh, process uh, in which we have uh, created uh, for, uh, for the installation, we have created a new folder in which we copy the binary and then the config files uh, in that uh, working folder. So uh, in this manner, we will be able to uh, prevent the loss of your uh, 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 PEM, uh, PEM files, of your uh, identity files. And also uh, it will uh, uh, be easier to uh, upgrade the, the version of the binary or the config files. So uh, the update uh, script is like uh, uh, here, it only fetches the new branches from the both uh, repos and start building again the, the uh, binary and then it will copy uh, into that uh, uh, working folder. So uh, I want, uh, if you have uh, some uh, uh, time to spare, uh, you might uh, want to play a little bit with, uh, with those script files, maybe debug uh, them, find uh, some issues, you can use the issue tab here and uh, open a new issue if you find something or uh, create a pull request. You can also, uh, sorry, uh, you can also uh, uh, make some, uh, uh, maybe you might want to add uh, some other uh, uh, operating system and platforms. Everything uh, will be will be here. So uh, right now, uh, yeah, we managed to make them run only on uh, on Linux, but it should be uh, pretty straightforward to be made uh, to run also on Windows on or Mac or whatever uh, operating system you have. Jonas Moraru were, 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 was asking, have you considered uh, creating an official Docker file? Uh, yeah, we... It's quite hard to it's run quite Docker hard. on Windows. <laughs> yeah, we are not uh, going to uh, 
to support uh, Docker right now, uh, maybe in the future, but um, yeah, we have some issues uh, when running in Docker, and that's why we are uh, um, suggesting uh, the validator community to run on a physical or a virtual machine uh, if they want. Uh, by using some scripts. Yep. Maybe we will provide some uh, installer files, especially on Windows, uh, if uh, we're going to manage to do it in time. And uh, that will might easy, uh, it will make it easy on, uh, on running the node on the Windows. That yeah, way. it is uh, quite hard to run Docker on Windows, not so user-friendly as on Linux. Yeah, it has some issues also. Um, Yes, someone reported us in the, uh, when running in Docker file that uh, the time UI couldn't have been run. So uh, yeah, there's still some issues. Yeah, there are, there are multiple. Uh, uh, just just as a note here from my point of view, there there are multiple uh, limitations or uh, prob problems. As a, for example, as a system engineer, uh, from my point of view, is that you never run a production server on uh, on a docker right so if you for example if you want to run or create your uh, validator and get experience of, on, on running a, a productive set of validators then uh, hosting uh, hosting it on AWS or Google Cloud or whatever virtualization system and then on top of that again another layer of virtualization is again not the best way of uh, hosting stuff. I think uh, there are, there are a, a few guys from other communities in here. Uh, I think from uh, uh, Liviu, Liviu uh, maybe you can touch a bit or share a bit uh, of your knowledge on running other validators on other ecosystems maybe. Are you using Docker or? Uh, second, I was on mute. Uh, no, I'm not using Docker. I'm using uh, Linux and CentOS on yeah. different servers, uh, depending on on the need. Uh, I'm using uh, Elrond with uh, with Linux, of course. Uh, it's I, I really like the 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 monitoring view yeah, that you have on the dashboard. Uh, it was a pleasant surprise when I when I saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I could say that from all the validators that that I'm doing now, even in other ecosystems, uh, looks good, better than <laughs> than than most. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but but I think you you can just uh, also in terms of the Docker or virtualization on top of virtualization. Uh, is not is not the best best way to do it. It's not the best practice. Maybe as a as a short term uh, development development uh, host, or if you want to not to trash your uh, same personal computer where you're <laughs> going online, then Docker might be a way. But on production uh, producting or a long term long term hosting uh, environment, uh, I we I, per I personally don't recommend it. Same. <laughs> Great, thank so you. We are, uh, we are using Docker for our uh, testing tool. So we have a Docker image that runs on our team city to run all the tests there. But uh, we also considered um, um, creating a Docker image with our um, latest version there. But um, it seemed to be quite hard to configure it for, uh, for Windows. Having the Hyper-V activated in Windows, we had to deactivate it, install something, activate it again, and it was uh, quite uh, hard to, to make it work. Yomut uh, Moraru says he has been running the validator node on Docker for the past weeks. Uh, did you run it, uh, or are you running it on Linux? Uh, yeah, he's using also using the log view. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a limitation that we have found out uh, after we launched the test that the Docker uh, didn't uh, run the the term UI uh, memory. Yeah. So. Hey guys. And the reason we don't use hey. Docker. Uh, you're not here. Hey. So. 
can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear. Yep. Okay, yeah. so uh, if I may, can I talk a bit about uh, running uh, running the validator node on, on Docker? Is it a good time? Sure, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 We can hear you, we right. can see you. So basically, yes, the term UI doesn't work very well with Docker, especially if you are using an um, I'm using Rancher, so I'm viewing the logs from a web interface. So um, I, I had to use the legacy UI view, uh, essentially. But um, I can see from, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Rancher, but you can see uh, the information that uh, you have in the, in the term UI dashboard uh, in in that dashboard as well. So um, mm -hmm. network usage and the, all of the other stuff uh, as well in terms of the process, not uh, not what the additional information you guys have uh, mm -hmm. about the consensus and, and stuff like that. Um, so I think um, I'm new to the validators game. So uh, I was uh, especially interested if anyone is using Docker in production. Um, I think if you couple it with Kubernetes and um, um, and uh, a good orchestrator, uh, it might work. But I'm not sure. So this is uh, this is this is what I'm trying right now to see uh, what solutions there are for um, for creating a highly available uh, setup. Mm -hmm. But it seems Great. to work fine. Uh, I've been running it for a couple of weeks and. It stopped once, but uh, other than that, it works well. Yeah, about that, uh, you can also make a pull request uh, on our script uh, repo and put there a Docker file or something like this. If you find something that it can be useful for others, you can also make a pull request. And this is valid for all of you. Uh, if you find something and you can improve, you are welcome to open pull requests and. Uh, yeah, help us uh, uh, build a, uh, a wonderful tool. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe just uh, one one note, you know, Maybe maybe you can uh, share the the tool you were uh, saying about uh, seeing your logs on the web interface. Would be quite interesting because I'm I'm also uh, looking at some solutions. But if you have something already up and running, it's uh, even better. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, I can. I'm not sure if I can attach screenshots to this chat. Yeah, or maybe the name at least from the tool, and or if you if you if you have time, maybe any 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 day, uh, you you could also. Um, Danger. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. Awesome. Okay, maybe you can also. Uh, we we should definitely uh, make a topic uh, on on uh, on one one specific channel of uh, the best practice of configuring the validators, because right now I think there's a couple of ways everybody is using their own configuration or maybe is using their own uh, knowledge, and I think some sort of uh, uh, knowledge can be shared and it's good for for the community itself. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I thought you won't agree on that, but uh, I'm happy mm -hmm. you have actually wrote uh, that you're okay with it. Okay, so uh, I think if if you guys have any any other questions, uh, uh, we we should answer. I, I think we can uh, we can touch a bit on on uh, we we already had a few questions dropped uh, from uh, from uh, from the registration form for today, um, and one of the question questions was uh, what are the new improvements of the testnet system? So what what are the features that? Uh, or maybe the second question also relates to it. What are the, what are the missing elements uh, when running an official mainnet? Uh, maybe if any of you guys want to touch a bit on that. Uh, 
it depends on what was asked about the official uh, mainnet. In terms of uh, development, we have a few <coughs> more features we have to add before launching the mainnet. One of these, uh, uh, some of these uh, features are end of the epoch event, start of the epoch event, like shuffling the nodes out and into the shards, creating Genesis blocks for the epoch, deleting everything, uh, uh, deleting and pruning every data, uh, every historical data, because you do not have to keep everything just one day, uh, the last day or last two days. Then we have to see through the battle of nodes how our economics works and we might upgrade it a, it a few times and see what will be our final economic version for the mainnet. Then uh, slashing is another big part. Slashing bad behavior, uh, bad and malicious nodes. Uh, we have a few ideas about it and it will be implemented in the next couple of sprints and uh, we will also test it out through the Battle of Nodes. Then we have all those normal stuff like SDK, cookbook to create a smart contract, tools for smart contract development, other some other tools to keep up your node and to help maintain the node, the uptime of your validator. Then we want to launch with a depth store as well to see what kind of applications are running on an errand in an explorer. I think that's some of it. There are other there are other details yeah. about this as well. Uh, at least this uh, is what we have planned to to add uh, before the mainnet. Of course, there are other optimizations that uh, we are thinking of and other features that we are thinking of adding. But uh, yeah, these are the main ones we, we want to cover. Okay. And maybe maybe uh, this this uh, on the upcoming sprint on the on uh, by the end of the sprint, maybe just uh, another briefly overview about uh, the new features, uh, maybe in 30 seconds, like, <laughs> <laughs> like this is the, the was the first one, the new new improvements of the, the testnet system. So yeah, so it's uh, a part of it is uh, finalizing the the economic part, the rewards and fees, which we want for the next test, testnet version. Uh, the other one was uh, with the smart contract to have uh, validators join uh, during the testnet run and not necessarily uh, prepare it before. Um, yeah, I think there was also some uh, work being done for uh, for the uh, virtual machine. And yeah, new 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 stuff to to uh, to add to the uh, term UI, new things to to check and yeah. Yeah. I, I think also that the validator behaviors uh, should be should be covered on the, the upcoming version of the testnet by the end of the, the sprint. And as Robert mentioned, I think before this, uh, this is one uh, or really, really good um, uh, uh, overview about what and how every validator is behaving and, and acting in the, the network. So one, right. you, you will still, by, by having that, you will still have uh, a, at least a couple of weeks up until the, the mainnet release to, to make sure that your validator is acting as it should and you are able to maintain it online once we are uh, ready to launch. Yeah. Uh, another, another thing is, I think we have only a few, few min minutes left, uh, it will it is. Uh, it will be um, some sort of uh, reporting at the finish of each testnet. This is the way uh, the validators understand better and has been proven uh, the results. Oh, okay, somebody's joining now. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so the the question was if we are going to. Um, 
uh, do a summary at the end of each testnet. Yes, I think we'll 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 do our we'll try to to cover what are the takeaways and what we have achieved by by the end of the end of each each testnet, uh, starting with this one. So, yeah, actually, we are uh, more. Uh, on the fly, as we get new issues from the testnet uh, uh, being reported, yeah, we add them uh, to the current sprint and try to solve them and uh, have have a fix as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you, you for the ones who who have been at the the latest uh, launch, we have launched with the version I think uh, one point one point no one zero one two. And then we have upgraded on the go <laughs> to one zero one five, right? So those those kinds of stuff uh, we are trying to patch and upgrade uh, as much as possible. And there are currently three more, uh, three three uh, open bugs, three mm -hmm. open issues on our side. Uh, most of them uh, are related to the out of memory or to some memory leaks. Mm -hmm. And once we have uh, that, I think we and we have also the economics part then we have the base or the core level uh, almost completed. And uh, yeah, I think for the for the next upcoming weeks, uh, we're going to see a, a smooth progress on uh, on the on the testnet. And it, things are going to get more interesting from from one week to another. Yep. Any any other questions? Okay, if uh, if you find other questions and you don't uh, want to tell them here, maybe you can write them in in the chat or uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I, can I think see something. The place, to, the place to communicate is through Riot. Yeah, uh, you can get help there from other validators. You can get help there from us. And we can also discuss what kind of improvements or what kind of tools you see that you would need as a validator. You can come up with proposals. You can even come up with a pull request and we are more than happy to review it. Yep. By the way, even in the running testnet, if somebody would want it to run a smart contract, you could easily deploy it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> easily meaning that uh, there are uh, there are certain features that are just hidden, so for, <laughs> are, are just <laughs> disabled from the user interface uh, or from the wallet space, just not to to enable to or make make everyone uh, crash it before before it should. Because there are, there are certain uh, things that are being patched and upgraded on on the go, but I think with the upcoming version we'll we'll uh, try to enable also the data field, and uh, you guys will might might be able to deploy some contracts or play with them uh, as well. Yeah, I think also in the same time we are we are exploring, and uh, maybe Rod, uh, Robert, you can touch a bit on the new VM. Uh, okay, as I don't know how many of you guys follow our, I hopefully everybody from you, follow our uh, Elrond, uh, this week in Elrond, where we, uh, in a couple of tweets, we described what we did in the last week in terms of development. So, Crypto Bubbles is running on a formally verified VM using Yella as a language, but this is a fair, uh, this language is not so used by any developer. And we thought that uh, all the, all the blockchain communities and all the developers are moving uh, to support was as a virtual machine. So we thought, okay, let's do it as well, because our uh, platform is plug and play we can we are not limited to support only one virtual machine we can support as many as we want so in the last sprint we 
integrated uh, a new virtual machine uh, uh, which, uh, which can run any was uh, any contract compiled to was and uh, through this print we are going to benchmark it stress test it system test it and if everything is fine uh, that VM will enter at the end of the sprint as well into the development branch or the master branch. So anybody can write contracts in most common known languages like C, C++, Rust, JavaScript and others which uh, will be deployable into our algorithm. Hi guys. I don't know if you hear me or not. Yeah, we can hear. Listen, can hear. I'm, I'm Adrian Roman, and um, I want to ask you something. I'm sorry for my English. I hope you understand me. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure all the people on this meeting knows almost everything about blockchain. But for the beginner, for for someone like me, who don't know too much about that will be an easier tutorial how to connect to uh, air node or if i don't know if it will be very difficult for us to to connect or not because for example uh, the tutorial how for the observers it was very very easier very step by step uh, mm -hmm. it, it was perfect I don't know if, if it if will be the same with for the validator or not. Yeah, it's basically the same. Uh, it's just uh, uh, it matters when you register. Uh, if you if you go through the process right now to register as a validator, this is uh, also uh, doesn't uh, take any technical knowledge to do it. It was just uh, filling up some data into the into the spread into a. Um, a spreadsheet uh, but uh, yeah google doc spreadsheet but uh, yeah we will have uh, questions like uh, yours covered into a document we are, we're actually preparing such a document also for after this uh, this meeting where you can find out the useful information for a validator what is a nonce uh, what can you see in a block uh, stuff like this uh, like really basic things that you can uh, grab just uh, as you start up to learn about uh, blockchain and try to run some nodes. Okay, but if, I don't know, somehow we can't connect, what do we have to do? Give up or <laughs> someone who wants to help us or what, what do we have yeah, to there do? Is always somebody, there is always somebody willing to help you guys. Somebody in the Riot channel. Do you have the address of the Riot channel? Yes, okay, because I want to start with my cousin, for example. I want to start with four four nodes, but mm -hmm. I don't know how to connect not even one. <laughs> so, place, start with one. You find all the help in the right channel. And uh, like uh, Adrian said, you know, uh, the other Adrian, not, not you. <laughs> uh, um, it's best to first to learn the basic. What is... Uh, the key used for uh, what is the nonce what, what what are the details of the term ui or the dashboard you see there you know so you get familiar with these few not many details just a few details and then you move on but there's always help in the riot channel okay because what i understand until now it's difficult with windows okay i will install linux on my computer uh, it's, uh, it was difficult to uh, use Docker. Yes. Uh, if it's if it's easier with Linux, okay. Because if I go to Amazon and I have if I have to pay an an instance, I think will be much expensive. It it might be a bit a bit uh, a bit more expensive. It depends on which country are you living. But now uh, I'm in, I'm in Italy, but I want to start in Romania. Oh, okay. So, so for example, in Romania, actually, the internet speed is, uh, or the internet connection is very, very yeah, low. Yeah, the speed is here. It's impossible, and it's not, it's not okay. <coughs> yeah. Uh, 
uh, we can help a lot through the riot and, uh, yeah. and connect to your computer and help yeah. even with uh, codes and scripts and debug. Yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, Julian also helped a lot of people from the community to to bootstrap a node. Uh, yeah, and there there are others also. Eddie, also Mihai. I, I've seen that uh, uh, they they wrote. Uh, so Rim also, uh, yeah. also yeah. helps a lot of people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can you can find help in. Uh, okay, in thank you very much. Because the reason for my uh, question it was, I look different platforms and uh, <laughs> it was very hard to understand the the tutorial. And I think mm -hmm. maybe will be easier with uh, Elrond. Yeah, we are we are trying to to do uh, to to automate things as much as possible, and the, the idea is as much as as the network grows and the technology grows, then uh, the things get get more uh, straightforward for everyone how you should run and how you should do and what's the process of doing or the best practice. Right now, we are currently on uh, upgrading and improving stuff on the daily basis. And it might change. The idea is right now to build a community, build the people around who can understand and follow up with, with the changes we are doing for the best of the protocol. And that's why you have also all those incentives aligned at the beginning of, uh, of Elrond. If you uh, manage to participate in the network at the mainnet uh, launch, then the incentives are definitely uh, bigger than uh, participating in the network where everything is pretty straightforward and uh, uh, yeah, everything is settled. Okay, I understand and thank you very much. If I need help, I will ask. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, I think Lohit also mentioned in the chat that Sorin, the master, uh, the, the nodes king, can help yeah that's <laughs> right so actually he helped uh, a lot of people he unfortunately couldn't make it today he's uh uh on on at work right now i think but uh I, over over in the, the upcoming hours he'll be uh, online and uh he'll he'll take care of you for sure yeah thank you okay any any other questions can we expect? Uh, uh, sorry, I'll come again after preparing question. Sorry, I didn't didn't understand. Yeah, I, that. I think he will uh, he will uh, reconnect. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I think we're uh, quite on time. Ten minutes uh, passed, uh, but I, I, I uh, I'm quite curious. Would you are you guys interested to participate in in uh, uh, other 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 events like this? If we're gonna make, let's say, uh, maybe before the network launch or after, right after a network launch, and discuss it on uh, right on the features that we have, uh, we are going to release and orchestrate everyone, maybe have it like in one hour uh, before, let's say 12 hours before the, the network launch uh, or before the, the upcoming release and see how it goes and, uh, if everybody, everybody uh, is understanding what we are testing and where are we going through. What, what do you think? Yeah, okay. I think we will make a pool on the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make a pool and then we'll, we'll see how the feedback is and yeah. Okay. Got it. Always good to know that there are no questions. Everybody knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank I'm, you. I have a question. I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. yeah. When can we explain? Uh, this uh, um, uh, Raspberry Pi model, yeah, like plug and play in the nodes. 
Uh, we couldn't hear you. Can you please write down the question? Yeah. I'll write down the question. Okay, so uh, in the in the meantime, while we are, um... oh, we got it. No, no, no. no. The second. Uh, Yeah, uh, Francesco said about that you could get $300 free hosting with uh, Google Cloud Provider, but Felix Krishan, our head of research, um, said that he doesn't think that using the free tire or even the paid tire in the Google Cloud, um, cloud platform uh, for crypto is allowed under Google's terms and conditions. Uh, yes. I I, I just as a, sec, uh, as a note here, I think uh, since it's not proof of work, uh, there, there is quite a difference between proof of work and proof of stake, and the, the, I think the main problem with the proof of work was uh, that the, the compute was uh, most costly effective on on uh, uh, on terms of uh, hardware and uh, yeah uh, energy consumption, and with the proof of stake or at least with what Elrond does, I think that shouldn't be a problem anymore. Uh, it depends. I think the only the the only. Oh, okay. Sorin the king. Uh, so, yeah, Sorin the master of notes is uh, is uh, in here. So yeah, I, what I was saying is that I think the 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 main problem what I see is only the the bandwidth, which might be charged on top of what you are using for your uh, for your compute. And uh, but the idea is at the mainnet launch, it, it depends uh, if we manage to get the, that adoption to have 100% load and use that all 100 megabits uh, internet uh, connectivity. But if not, then uh, definitely the requirements might be a bit lower at the beginning of the network or the mainnet launch, and uh, you uh, might need to make sure that uh, your node is uh, able to to be upgraded in case of uh, those requirements are, are are needed right so there are two two approaches here my two yeah. cents on this is uh, this is the best time to experiment mm, yeah. take a vps run it from home you know during the test net this is the best time to try it both ways and see whatever works best for you Okay, Lohit uh, put his question. When can we expect Raspberry Pi plug and play node? Um, I, I tried to, to uh, reorder again the latest version. I just received a notification, I think, three days ago that it's available to, to be ordered and get it in the office again. And uh, the, the, the once I clicked the link, I think it was one minute after. Uh, the all the, the entire stock was already gone, so I didn't manage to reorder it again uh, from anywhere else. I'll try again later today, and once we have it, I think this this shouldn't be a problem uh, at all. But I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say that uh, in the office, one of our colleagues uh, already tried on Raspberry Three. Uh, of course, they. Uh, didn't manage to uh, to process lots of transactions. It was just, uh, I think, around 20 transactions per second uh, with Raspberry 3. So, yeah, but uh, I guess uh, for uh, Raspberry 4 would be, yeah, yep. would be possible to, to think and process uh, more. Yep. I already see a farm of 1,000 Raspberry Pis, Rohit, right? <laughs> You are preparing in India. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think uh, we'll see a, a bit, yeah, some more farms, I think. Oh, okay. So people are, are joining now. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, but we, we are about to, to end the, the, the event. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining. If, if there are maybe, let's say, one, one last question, and uh, if not, then we're, we're going to end up. OK. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, let's try to to be online uh, and keep the the testnet uh, available and online up until the next release. And uh, thanks for joining us. And hope you you all enjoy the the call. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.